Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Scared of him 
was because he was known for his 900 chariots. Chariots of iron. And so everybody was scared and he ran with a stiff rod, I guess you could say. Right. He was rough on everybody. Yeah. And so it came to a point where God was, he had heard the people's cry and it was time for them to come out of that. So we find here that if you remember, Barak was going to go after him. Deborah told Barak, Deborah the prophetess, she told him, she said, Now, so Sarah's going to fall. And he's not just going to fall, but he's going to fall into the hands of a woman. And Barak, I'm sure, was taking heed to that very well because he trusted Deborah. Because when Deborah told him that the Lord was going to give him the victory here right. over the Canaanites, right. he said, okay, I want you to go with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, well, okay, that'll be fine. So she did. She went with him. And they had a great, great victory there. Completely destroyed the old King David. But I guess what struck me on this story was how God does things. Now, Jael, it says that she was the wife of Heber the Kenite. Well, he felt safe to go into her tent because that there was no strife between the Kenites, or Heber the Kenite, and the king of uh, Jacob. There was no, no problem there between them. Part of that reason when I got to looking, you know, you can find out a lot if you just look a little bit. I got to looking in there, and Kenites, when you look that word up over here and there in the Strong's, it says, it takes you directly to, it says, the firstborn son of Adam and Eve. I said, what? Did I hit the wrong button? I look back and no. Cain. Kenites. Canites. Here were the Kenites. Well, I got to looking at that. Okay, why is, why is it that she felt that it was necessary to help the children of God? Because she put on a false pretense here that everything's okay, that she's going to help him. She brings him in. Not only did she not give him water, she gave him milk. Well, the boy's tired. He's been running. Folks try to kill him. Right. So she gave him some milk. What the milk going to do? Most times, if you mm -hmm. sit down for three minutes, that milk's going to help you get a little sleepy. Mm -hmm. And then she covered him up with a lime or a rug or whatever, just covered him up with something. First of all, you have to understand that the Kenites were Arabians. They were they were uh, nomads. They traveled. Right. Place to place. Well, and so he felt kind of at ease anyway because he was in a woman's tent. In her place and in that time that was you didn't go in there unless you were invited and if somebody come by and said is anybody in there and she said no they wouldn't push their way in and go check so he felt like he had a safety zone there you know but she completely went against what she was portraying That's right. so why well, it got me to thinking, why, why is that? Well, I think she was trying to help out, or trying to do in her husband's bidding. Because come to find out, Heber, the Kenite, was of the children of, actually they called him here, they called him, he was the Kenite. See, I lost my place. He was of the children of Hobab. 
Hobab, which we know as Jethro, uh -huh. who was Moses' <coughs> father-in-law. Yeah. Right. Jethro had nine different names in the Bible, I found out as I started studying this. I thought, why did they call him Hobab? <laughs> well, that was just one of the names that they was calling him in different places. But come to find out that, yes, he was a Midianite. But the Kenites were also Midianites, or from that area. So I got to look and I said, okay, so he's kin to Moses. This by marriage. But now Jaleel, evidently, she was either trying to gain favor, or she felt the unction of God on her, that this man had been persecuting and he was running, and he was, God was after him. Yeah. And either she felt that this was, the, this was, she was the last line of defense, she was going to stop him here before he went on. Who knows exactly what happened there. But you know, we have to be careful because if you ever get God on your trail, the thing that you're the most fond of and that you put the most trust into will be the thing that kills you. That's right. That's right. Because you look you, here, it. and Sisera was the captain of those 900 chariots of iron. What killed him? One iron peg in the hands of a little woman. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. right. This wasn't a strange place, but Thing, well, why would she do that? Well, because this was a woman's tent, for one thing. It was her domicile. There wasn't weapons of war there. She used what she had. And she, they were nomads. They were used to moving from place to place. She knew how to use a hammer and a tent stake, I'm sure. She grew up that way. And no doubt, and she thought, I, I can make him stay right here. So she nailed him to the ground. And then she was proud to stop the rock when he came back and say, look, the one you're looking for, I got him. I done hemmed him up in here. He can't go nowhere. <laughs> but isn't it ironic that the thing that he relied so much on was the, is the one substance that cost him his life. That's right. There's a, there's a word there in that. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've got to be careful what we're relying on. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Come on, Pastor. We've got to. Brother Steve, I know it's, it's the house of the Lord. But would you get that thing up there? Yes, sir. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's a spider or a cricket. Oh, yeah. It's a cricket, isn't it? Uh, there you go. Right. 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 Before the service uh, started, uh, I actually had a big fuzzy caterpillar on my shoe. Well, <laughs> that was on the floor here. Well, I seen that dude there walking across there. He was about that long. And I said, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brother Steve. You're welcome. I figured you'd run him down before he got gone. <laughs> yeah. I'll take care of the critters. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the Lord puts these, he puts these different accounts in there for a reason. Right. He wants us to understand that our reliance is not supposed to be on worldly things. It's right. not supposed to be on things that we can create, that we can build. For the we can handle the right. need right. to be on him. Yep. Now, you notice Barak ended up winning here. Why was that? Because he was depending on the word of God. That's right. He was depending on what God said was going to happen yep. through the prophetess, Deborah. Mm -hmm. But he said, okay, I know this is what's going to go. Let's go. So Sarah had always trusted in his might, in his power, 
in his uh, things. Yeah, uh -huh. right, right. And because of that, those things let him down. Yeah. Right. Because he thought he was powerful anyway, Sister Gwen. But when he turned around and looked, they're killing his men left and right. They're destroying his chariots. What did the Bible say? It said that Sisera took off running on foot. Right. He said, everything that I have relied on, everything that I have put my trust in is letting me down. I've got to flee. Uh -huh. Now he's running for his life. Yeah. He's no longer being able to be carried around in the chariot and feel like he's invulnerable, you know, like he can't be touched. Right. So now he's having to run. And he's running for his very life. Yeah. Right. But he had been against God all this time. Yeah. God gets on your trail. Mm -hmm. There ain't no escape. Right. You're going to get caught. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes that's a good kitchen. <laughs> and sometimes it's a bad kitchen. Right. Which one are you? Amen. <laughs> so, but I, me and Sister Mandy, we got tickled today because we were sitting there and I was studying this out. And she came in there while I was sitting there studying. And I said, let me show you this. And I just kept going through different things. And it's deep and you can do that. But I got to study in back. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and tell them what we found out today. We went there and got to study. Y'all will find this neat. I believe we will. I did. But we got to studying back there about this lineage. And Sister Melody said, she said, well now, they're talking about Jethro and talking about him being a Midianite. Yeah. He, she said, but now, didn't Moses marry a black woman in Ethiopia? Right. And I said, well, the Bible says that, so we looked it up. And he got over there and got to looking at it. And it was really funny because actually Miriam, his sister, said she was she was jumping on Moses, her and Abel. They were saying, look, you married a black woman. And now you think you're better than us and you're the only one who can hear from God. Cannot we also hear from God? Mm -hmm. And God heard it. Mm -hmm. And God said, y'all three come talk to me. <laughs> Call them out to the tabernacle. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Like I said, don't get God on the trail. Mm -hmm. He brought them out to the tabernacle and he says, when I speak to a prophet, now I'm paraphrasing, I can read this for you if you want me to. He said, when I speak to a prophet, I speak to them in visions and dreams. But with Moses, not so. I speak to him mouth to mouth, yeah. face to face. Mm -hmm. He said, I speak to him directly. That's right. And more or less, he was spanking them, saying, Who do you think you are touching my man? Uh -huh. Amen. He didn't like it. Now, y'all stay with me. He didn't like it because Miriam was pointing out the fact that Moses married a black woman. Uh -huh. She said he was. she was an Ethiopian. Not necessarily was that so. She was a Cushite, which was in Hebrew means dark skinned. Right. Yeah. But she, the Bible says that she called them, or called her an Ethiopian. But, for those of you that have a problem with this, let me show you what happened after that. Miriam, the Lord, the Bible says that the Lord left them. He departed from the tabernacle. 
And as soon as he departed from the tabernacle, Miriam contracted leprosy. And she turned white as snow. Wow. He said, if you've got a problem with him and a black woman, then I'll turn you as white as white. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hello? Amen. Don't touch God's anointing. Huh? Don't, don't touch God's anointing. Don't touch God's anointing. Even with words. Don't matter if you don't agree with exactly everything right. in that. Right. There's the words. Amen. The land of Ethiopia was the land of Cush. Yeah, well, it's the dark skin. Yeah. But they said actually she was not a, a Cushite or an Ethiopian. She was a Midian, Midianite. Well, there were Midianites. There was one, I can't remember his name specifically, but there was one man that was very dark skinned that was a Midianite, and the darker skinned folks came from him. So, but anyway. I thought that was rather interesting. Wow. That's pretty cool. God turned her white white so yeah. she had a problem. And it wasn't so much that she was saying she had a problem with him. It was just the fact that she thought, who are you? I'm, I'm here for God just as good as you can. And God said, let me tell you something. No, you can't. <laughs> I speak to you. I speak with signs and visions. But when I speak to Moses, I speak to him face to face. Right, Miriam was a prophet. And she was a prophet. Yeah. But she wasn't Moses. Right. <laughs> Aaron was a prophet. But he wasn't well, Moses. <laughs> so, you know. Ever, evidently, Aaron must have been quiet in that situation because he didn't get no leprosy. <laughs> he but Miriam, Miriam probably she had to talk as much as she did. Miriam was also a worship leader. Uh, it's also unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know. Taking on my ears. Yeah. <laughs> There's the Lord. By the way, leprosy was shunned. Exactly. She was yeah, you couldn't be, couldn't be around my brother. Nope. And it was, she had leprosy because it said, and Aaron looked upon her and seen that she had leprosy. So the priest judged it. Right. That was what he did. Yeah. But anyway, where did that, how, how does that all tie back in with jail? The point of it is, she was not someone that you would have thought that would have done what she done. That's it. Right. You really wouldn't have thought she, from all from all aspects and all views of her, you'd have thought he can trust her. <coughs> Right. Now, as you study in on some of that, of course, there's always some folks going to say, well, now he, you know, he done something and, and, you know, he tried something with her and she thought, I'll get you back. You know, that the Bible don't say that. Some of those uh, rabbi in it or whatever you call it, scholars, they said it. But they were just trying to take up, trying to take up for her. Yeah. Because she did the Lord a good service. Yeah. I wrote it there, and that goes into even later. I mean, you know, because God says, touch not my anointing. You know? Exactly. And that, that can mean preachers, whatever. When God's anointing, we're all God's anointing. Exactly. It's like the Christians. Christian women as men. Yeah. They're anointed, not the same way as a minister is. Probably, but you're still about to anoint the Lord in your life. So that still means don't be doing something that's going to harm or destroy. That's right. Even in, in your tongue, you remember, is one way that you can destroy as good as anything. Because the tongue can destroy, you cut, yeah. cut a song of the Bible. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> One that goes back to my mind is uh, Saul and David. Mm -hmm. When David and uh, God struck, uh, God um, corrected David whenever he just cut his shirt tail. Mm -hmm. He says, "I can take his life." But God said, "Touch not my anointing." Mm -hmm. He's like, even though Saul was done turned, God done turned him into a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. 
he was still anointed of God. Exactly. And God had to take care of Saul and not nobody else. Mm -hmm. right, right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He was still anointed, even though he wasn't walking with the Lord right then, he was still his anointed. Because right. God does not repent his anointing. That's it. Yeah. So you have to be careful. Touch the man of God. I've told y'all before, don't y'all make too much fun of my bald head. Y'all look like fun of my bald head. <laughs> Remember what it was that uh, Elijah, wasn't it? Elijah. Yeah. Elijah. Elijah. What's that, Elijah? Elijah. Yeah. Huh? Elijah. Yeah, that's what I said, Elijah. I say it for him. You know what? You know, he, they come out there, and the kids come out there mocking him. My, my daughter got a kick out of that first time she they come out there walking in. She said, go up there, old bald head. And he said, uh-huh, yeah. Turn around there and embarrass him. I throw him up. <laughs> <laughs> it don't bother me, though. Talking about saying that word, you reminded me of your granddaddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. of he would say, I mean, we say, I think the way it said, he could be pronounced either way. Well, I say Elijah, Elijah ain't much different, you know. So it's not about saying. That way you don't have to figure out which one it is. Huh? That way you don't have to figure out which one it is. That's right. I say it close enough, and I know I'm hitting it right. What way is that? And if y'all don't know which one I'm talking about, y'all just need to study more. Huh? <laughs> uh, hallelujah. We go on back to it. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Right. What you, if you put too much trust in something that is not God, it is going to fail you. That's exactly right. It don't matter if it's, if it's, you know, we can lean on different things in this world. We can lean on each other. That's right. We can lean uh, on family. We can lean on friends. We can lean on money. Yeah, we can lean on property. Our own understanding. Yeah, our own understanding. Of things. Well, I don't really believe it says that. And I don't really think that the Bible says this or says that. Well, lean not into your own understanding. If you want to know the correct thing of what the Bible does say, the best teacher there is is God. And He will make it clear to you. If you dig it, Pop that thumb in there and start digging in that word, you'll make it real. That's it. That's right. You will make it real. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct us. That's path. right. Exactly right. right. Everything we do, everything we're to do in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. So if we're doing that, then that means we're relying on him. That's it. If I'm saying I'm, I'm doing this in Jesus' name, then I'm not doing it in my name. That takes me out of the picture. That's right. I say, Lord, I can't do this myself, so I'm going to do this in your name because I know that's where the power is. I know that's where the authority is. I know that's where my help comes from. So, I don't have to worry about getting pinned down somewhere because something doesn't come up and snuck up on me. Amen. Because He's going to keep us. He's going to protect us. He's going to take care of us. And we don't we don't have to worry about it. He never fails. Never fails. Never fails. Anything else will leave you. Yep. That's it. I was praying this morning, I was thinking about after after reading this, I did I might have done before, I can't remember now. But I was I remember praying this this morning. I said, Lord, don't let me rely on something that will die. Yep. Or yep. something that can be tarnished, or something that can be destroyed or melted. Yeah. Don't let me put my trust in an inanimate <coughs> object or something that has no more power against death and hell than I do. Right. You know, I need to put my trust in Him. Yeah. Yeah. I need to have my trust completely in Him. Because if I'm trying to do it on my own, we're in a mess. Right. Yeah. It's up to me, we're sunk. <laughs> but if I can put my trust in Him, put my reliance on Him, yes, Amen. 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 Am
And then I don't have to worry about it. Because it's, it's going to be just exactly like it's supposed to be. It's going to be right. right. And he's going to bring me through it. Amen. Yes, he will. Too many times. Every time. Too many times I have. I may have started out and had my attention in the wrong spot. Yep. Or I may have been putting too much on myself. Yeah. Taking too much on myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Thinking, well, I, you know, you don't outright just say, most of the time you don't, you don't just outright say, well, I'll take care of this myself. Oh, no. But sometimes... We, our actions are saying that. Yeah. That's right. You catch yourself right. in the middle. I'll give you an example. All of a sudden I said, Bob Joe, me and you fix and take off and go to Florida to the beach. Yeah. We'll go right for Bob Joe's looking at me. He's going to say, yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? If we did that, they ain't going to tell them what we're going to run into, Bob Joe. No. Because we didn't ask the Lord. Lord, no. is it okay yeah. for me and Bob Joe to go to the beach? Is it all right for us to go here or there? I'm going to go out now to go fishing. But if, <laughs> but if you don't get his permission, you're going to sink him down out there. Yeah. You ain't going to catch no fish. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, right. I can't catch him. <laughs> we got to have, have God's will in what we're doing. Or we're going to be. That's it. right. I know. I've done that. Y'all probably heard me tell this before. I'll never forget. Brother Tom, I said it was time for me and Sister Mel to have a plan. We needed something bigger. Sean was getting bigger. We had to do it on HHR, and boy, that thing, he had to reach up like that to go out the window. I felt like I just put it on. <laughs> no big thing. And I said, we're going to have to have a plan. So you know what I did, Mom? I went and bought a plan. Tried to do it on HHR, and got me a plan. Now, I got one of them. That didn't work out so well. <laughs> One day my wife was coming back, she was cleaning the health department over there, and was coming back from the health department, got over on the bridge, or right there at the bridge, at Beach River, and the front wheel tore and everything just passed her. Took off. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, all the whole thing come loose. And what happened? Praise the Lord. She was able to just get off the side of the road. But that man cost me. And then it cost me some more. And it cost me some more. Finally, got rid of that thing. But I'll tell you all this, when I got ready to get rid of it, I didn't say, well, I'm going to do this. I said, Lord, what would you have me do? <laughs> I got nailed down on this last one. I don't want this again on this one. Uh, I got messed up on that man because I stepped out of turn. Oh, yeah. right. I stepped out of place. <clears throat> Just be careful of where you lay your trust. That's the word that I feel to go forth tonight is to be careful where you lay your trust. Be careful where you get comfortable. The servant would never die had he not laid down and went to sleep. Had he not got so comfortable in a place that he thought he was okay, he would have never died there. You got to remember, Samson laid down in, in Delilah's lap. Yeah. And when he lay there, he thought he was in a place of safety. Yeah. He thought he was in a place that, where he could trust yeah. her. Mm -hmm. But when he woke up, all of his power was gone. Yeah. <laughs> all of his strength had left. Him. That's right. And the part that worries me is where it says, and he wist not. Yeah. 
that the Lord had left. I don't want to be there, Sister Doris. Mm -mm. I don't want to be there. I don't ever want, don't ever want to wonder if God's still with me. I don't ever want to have to worry about that. Amen. Don't think that it's that, that it ain't that hard to do. Y'all remember Mary? Mary was his mom. She left him in the city for three days before she come up missing him. Uh -huh. That was his old mama. How you explain that to God? I lost your child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah. So if Mary could be three days without him, you know? Yeah. She found him doing his father's business. Yeah. He was. But can you imagine how scared she was when she turned her death? And then can you imagine how she beat herself over the head? Mm -hmm. I ain't seen that kid in three days. Yeah. I thought he was with his buddies. Wow. I thought he was, I thought he was back here. Yeah. But they were off for that. We gotta be careful. We might end up without him too. Right. If we get too comfortable, we get to relying too much on other things. He might be gone before we know. That's right. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all do remember we don't believe in what saved all of us. That's right. That's right. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. There ain't no bad Jesus, oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus can back away. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We have to be like Paul when he died daily. I ain't made that my own head until here. We've got to make sure that where we lay our lives, where we lay our trust, we've got to make sure where we're putting our trust into today. Yeah. It should be in that name. It should be in Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shall we stand tonight? Trust these women, so we don't need to trust these women. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of women saying, "Yeah, we don't trust you." <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 He was red before he started talking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I got you walking a <laughs> Yeah, I got me bald, fellas. That's good if you go to the waist. Yeah, let's pray. Let's pray and let's pray for Steve. <laughs> Lord, we do love you tonight. We're so thankful, Lord, for your word. We're thankful that you can just yes, make sure. things a little bit clearer to us, Lord. We love you tonight. We ask you, Lord, I ask you that you take each and every one from this place tonight, Lord, keep your hand of protection upon them. Lord, let them walk in your love and in your light, Lord. Lord, just protect their mind, body, and soul from the attacks of the adversary, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love y'all. Uh, don't forget. Amen. Amen. Y'all know what? I just got about that. I sure did, because I was making up that cabin there, and I did not realize something. I forgot about it. I thought Friday nights we'll have a game, and I thought, no, puppy better have it on Saturday. Okay. Saturday is Monday. Yeah. 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 But I did, I just made it everywhere. Anyway. Happy God birthday. bless you. Happy yeah. birthday, too. Yeah. Right. Happy birthday. Right. But y'all, be ready at 6 o'clock.